One of the amazing things about the Wheel of Time is the sheer size and scope of the world that Robert Jordan created. There's tons of history, distinct cultures, different geography, and different people. Over the course of 15 books, we got to see a ton of the world, but there remains quite a bit of the story of the Wheel of Time that we didn't get to see. In today's video, join me as we take a look at 10 places that we never got to see in the Wheel of Time books. This video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers all the way through the last book in the series, A Memory of Light. If you don't wanna be spoiled, watch this video at your own risk. You've been warned. So a few things before we jump into my list. First of all, these are places that exist in the time of the story. I won't be adding in places to the story that are in the past or even in the future of the Wheel of Time story. Second, the order that I'm listing these in is really just the order of the places that I would personally want to visit. I'm sure your order would be much different. Make sure to let me know what that is in the comments of the video. And lastly, please smash the like button on this video. That really helps YouTube recommend these videos to more people. Also consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time lore or TV show content, which is all I do here on this channel. But let's go ahead and jump in to 10 places that we never got to see in the Wheel of Time, starting with number 10. All right, so I know this is sort of cheating on my rules because we did actually see the Great Blight during the books, especially the areas around what used to be Malkir and around Sheol Ghul. But the Blight is literally massive. Like think the size of Canada. That's the Blight. And there has to be a ton there that we never got to see. For example, how do you think they feed the millions of Trollocs that live in the Blight? They must eat something, and scavenging off humans that they capture near their borderlands just isn't going to cut it. There's too many Trollocs. There are likely massive farms around the Blight that provide food for the Shadowspawn to eat. Additionally, Grendel mentions that it does get colder the farther north in the Blight that you go. So I wonder what inhabits that area or whether there's anything inhabiting that area to the north of Sheogul. Lastly, we know that Moradin had a fortress somewhere in the northeastern Blight, probably above Shara and the Aeol Waste. We did see this area briefly from the interior as it was where he had his vast storage room of objects of the power. There's also a slave community around that area that he uses to support his fortress. I would have loved to have seen if there were more of these fortresses or slave communities around the Blight. Now, obviously not love that there are slaves, but were there other towns and other fortresses? Was there more structure and organization to the lands that the Shadow controlled? Obviously, that would have been really cool to me to see in the books, uh, but the Blight is obviously not a place that I would love to visit personally. So it gets the number 10 spot on the list. The Great Rift is one of the most amazing and imposing natural features on the planet. It lies in the southern Aeol Waste, splitting the waste from Shara. It's an immense canyon that runs almost 1,800 miles from top to bottom, and it makes the Grand Canyon of today's timeline look like nothing. So the Great Rift is simply a lifeless canyon that may have come into existence during the breaking of the world, and it shows the destruction that was caused by the male channelers going insane. As I mentioned, the Great Rift is about 1,800 miles long, but it's also incredibly deep. It ranges from one to three miles deep at its deepest point, and there are no natural bodies of water here, meaning that if you are in that canyon, you are going to die of thirst. It would be amazing to see, but only if you had a way to get away from it. There are no settlements and there's no water. The desert that the Great Rift lies in is also in the tropical zone of the planet, meaning that the heat and sunlight are also going to kill you considering there's no vegetation for shelter, no water to drink. This is not a safe place to visit, but despite that, it would be probably pretty cool to see. The Shadow Coast is the piece of land that sits at the very southwest corner of the Westlands. The Sea of Storms is the name given to the ocean south of the Westlands, and the Aerith Ocean is the name of the waters between Shan Chan and the Westlands, and the Shadow Coast sits at their convergence. So in the books, it's known to be a very treacherous place to sail, as there are dangerous reefs, broken coastline, tons of offshore islands that ships get blown into. There are almost no natural harbors in the area, and it's very, 
very sparsely populated. At one point, the Shadow Coast was a part of the Kingdom of Aelgar during the time of the Ten Nations, in the period directly after the breaking of the world. When Aelgar fell after the Trolloc Wars, it became a part of Balassun and later part of Carindor before being abandoned completely. Now the area is now bordered by both Terabon and Amadicia, and slightly by Altara, but none of those countries have claimed it or tried to resettle the area. Now the area along the Shadow Coast and on the interior is very, very mountainous, and there are supposedly very dangerous wild animals that live in those mountains, keeping any human settlement really from existing there. I love the idea of visiting a place that's almost completely devoid of any human habitation, but I also don't want to go out there on my own by myself. I don't want to die. So sounds cool to see, but that's why it's not higher on the list than this. The Land of the Mad Men is the name given to the large island, which is really a continent, in the southern hemisphere of the world of the Wheel of Time. Now, it resembles Australia, and it's roughly 3,000 miles across, 2,000 miles north to south. There are active volcanoes everywhere. The land is very seismically active, which could be due to the inhabitants. So there are inhabitants to the Land of the Mad Men, and it's said that there's no real order on the island. They never developed an efficient system to gentle male channelers. So if you can channel and you're a dude, the taint is running amok here. Guys are running around channeling, going crazy. And of course that can lead to the seismic activity. Now I did a video going more into depth about the land of the Mad Men, which you can watch by clicking the link somewhere up here. I will also have that linked at the end of the video as well. Nevertheless, I wish we got to see some of it. And maybe Nynaeve will take a trip there after the story and start healing madness now that Sidene's cleansed, who knows? But it would have been cool to see it in the story. Shara has been a mysterious place for most folks that have read The Wheel of Time. We obviously see the Sharan army play a large part in the last battle, but the lands, customs, and cities of Shara remain a mystery. The only time we actually ever visit Shara isn't even in the main story, but rather the cut short story River of Souls that was written by Brandon Sanderson but cut from the story, and it describes some of Demondred's time in Shara. There very well could have been an entire set of books written about Shara, given how much lore there is, the size of the nation, the strange customs. I would have loved to have read that. Shara itself is so isolated, almost unbelievably so, by its geography and its customs. It's a place that remains a mystery, a place that we only got rumors from until the very end of the story when the Sharans show up at the last battle and decimate the forces of the White Tower. I did a video explaining Shara and everything that we know about it that you can watch by again, clicking the link that lives somewhere up here or waiting till the end of the video. I think it would be really cool to explore Shara, but I wouldn't say based on what we know of it, that it's a place I'd wanna go and live. Now, before moving on in the list, I want to thank the video sponsor, Skillshare. Many of you know that my real job is as a business and personal coach. And while one of my passions is obviously the wheel of time, my other main passion is self-development and education. That's why I love the partnership that I have with Skillshare. One of the fastest ways that you can advance your career is by learning new skills. Whether it's something you've always wanted to learn, something you know that will get you ahead at work, learning something new is a big part of personal and professional development. I wouldn't have been able to start this channel without skills that I picked up on Skillshare. And the other thing that I love about Skillshare is that it's super cheap. So right now you can get it even cheaper. Just follow the link in the description of the video and use the code SUMMER50 and get 50% off of Skillshare for the year. They have thousands and thousands of courses you can take for one low price. You're not going to regret it. Again, follow my link and use the code SUMMER50 to get 50% off. All right, let's get back to the video. Lake Somal. Many of you probably thought to yourself, Nablus, I don't know where the hell Lake Somal is, and I don't blame you, although I bet you've seen it on the map before. The only large lake in the entire map of the Westlands is right here, just to the west of the Mountains of Mist. This is Lake Somal. Now, I find it fascinating because it is the only massive lake on the continent, and I'm actually a huge fan of lakes. Lake Somal is mentioned very briefly in the story as one of the bases of operation for the Dragon Sworn that were attacking Ara Doman. Rodel and Teralda defeated this group of Dragon Sworn, but that's the extent of the mention of it. Now, the lake itself is quite remote. There aren't any major settlements really close to it, which is odd given that it's a very large freshwater lake. In terms of size, we aren't given exact measurements, but Lake Somal is roughly 100 miles wide and 250 miles or so in height, which makes it 
slightly larger than Lake Erie, which is one of the great lakes in the United States and Canada. Now, I grew up going out on lakes on a boat, and while this isn't a super important place in the story, it's certainly a place I would like to visit. So while Lake Somal isn't exactly surrounded by major population centers, there is a decently large city about 100 miles away. And that city is Qatar, which is a very large and wealthy city that is technically a part of Ara Doman, but due to its distance from the capital, it operates very independently. Now, the city of Qatar serves as a trading center for the mining towns that line the mountains of mist, which makes it very wealthy. It's ruled by a group of lords, and there are frequent battles with Ara Doman that prevent it from becoming outright independent. The nation was built on the ruins of the ancient city of Ayman, which was an Ogier-built capital of the nation of Safer, which was one of the ten nations that arose after the breaking of the world. I love the cities of the Wheel of Time, and the fact that this is one of the major cities that we never visit makes me want to take a trip there. However, this won't be the last major city on this list. Devon Ride is not a major city, uh, and by any stretch of the imagination, by the way. <laughs> in fact, it's the smallest of the four towns in the Two Rivers region. Now, Devon Ride is just a small village in the Two Rivers, but it was once the site of a great bridge that crossed the Manethendrel River, which is also called the White River. Directly to the west of where Devon Ride is right now lies the site of the ancient city of Manethrin. Now, as the bridge was built around the site of Devon Ride, a great town grew around it that welcomed visitors to Manethrin. After the fall of Manethrin, the bridge fell into disrepair and eventually fell away and has not been rebuilt. No ferry exists here either due to the turbulent nature of the river and the large rapids. Devon Ride actually sits slightly to the north of the river. Uh, it doesn't actually sit on the river, and it serves as an endpoint for the old road that runs from Devon Ride all the way up to Tarn Ferry. We do see a contingent of fighters from Devon Ride coming to the aid of Emmons Field in the Shadow Rising, but we never visit the town itself. So why would I want to visit here? Well, it seems super peaceful and it's super far away from things and it sounds like a fun place to go live or take a short vacation to get away from it all. Most of you are probably wondering what the heck Shoal Arbella is, and it's probably one of the largest cities that you don't remember existing from the Wheel of Time. Shoal Arbella is the capital of the Borderlands nation of Arafel. It's a place that we obviously don't visit in the books, and it's the only one of the Westland's capitals that we don't visit, as a matter of fact. It's known as the City of 10,000 Bells. Now, this likely stems from the fact that Arafelans typically wear bells in their hair. Jahar Narishma is Arafelan, and you see him wearing bells in his hair in the story. One piece of trivia is that Shoal Arbella was one of the few capital cities in the Westlands that was not built on the ruins of an ancient city and is not Ogier built. It's a fairly new city in the scheme of things, and it's built to be one of the capitals of the nations that defends the Westlands from the shadow. Being the capital of Arafel, it's presumably quite large and quite well defended, like the other borderland capitals. What I love about the borderland cities is the combination of utilitarianism and beauty. I, I would love to visit Arafel and specifically its capital for that very reason. It's too bad I have no hair to put bells in. <music> Lastly, number one on my list is Shandar, the capital of the Shanchan Empire and likely the largest city in the world. We never see anything of Shanchan the continent other than Avienda and Ran taking a short trip there to go bang in an igloo. The empire is absolutely massive, controlling the entire continent, a continent that's larger than the Westlands, Ayo Waste, and Shara combined. Shandar is the capital of all of that, and the place where the Crystal Throne, the Tower of Ravens, and the Shanchan Royal Palace all are. Now, obviously, I don't want to take a trip to Shandar because of the progressive social policies. Slavery sort of sucks, and there's a lot of it going on there, but I would imagine that there would be a good bit to see, and I would love to have seen more of the continent of Shanchan, and presumably the extremely large city of Shandar and what it would have had to explore. So that's my list. Can you think of any other places that we never got to see that would have been cool to see? Let me know in the comments of the video and also let me know your top 10 and what it would have been. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. I also did want to take a second and thank everybody for the support uh, for my friend, podcast co-host, and fellow creator Rikappa Sadai. If you aren't aware, Brian had a fall about a week ago and 
He's been in a medically induced coma since then, recovering from multiple skull fractures. We started a GoFundMe to help with the medical and rehabilitation costs that would definitely be coming here. And to this point, we've raised almost $35,000 in four days truly incredible for this community. I, I wanted to thank everybody that was able to help. I will have that GoFundMe linked in the description of the video for those that still want to give. Huge, enormous thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you enjoy the content, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. On the screen right now are some of my higher tier patrons. Thank you all for your support. Lastly, take a look at one of these videos here that you might enjoy if you liked this one. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.